Let's learn what is a parity generator and a parity checker uh, and how to design these two circuits. So we will start by learning what is a parity. So you see in signal transmission, when we are sending a signal, we have a sender from where the signal is being sent and we have a receiver which receives that signal and the signal can be in, in bits, right? So let's say we have the message which is being sent in three bits and let's say we are sending the value one right i'm going to write the binary form of the, of the number one right so we have three bits to represent one which is zero zero one let's say during the transmission some error occurs and one of the bit changes for some reason maybe it's delayed or anything so if it changes and now this is equal to one this number is now changed the number 101 is now 5, which was previously 1. So due to the error of 1 bit, my number changed, right? The value changes and it, it has changed to one from 1 to 5. So, and we don't want that, right? So what we do is we uh, keep an extra bit, which we call a parity bit. And what we do is um, we... Uh, uh, first of all, we have two types of parities, even parity and odd parity. And let's say we are talking about even parity right now. So what we do is when we are sending a number, uh, a three bit or any bit number, let, let's bring it back to zero. Let's say it's zero. So what we will do is we will first of all check the number of ones in it. And while sending the number, we make sure that the number of ones should be even because we are right now we are setting the even parity. So if the number of ones are even, there is nothing is written in this bit that is it's zero. But if the number of ones are odd, which they are odd in this case, because this is zero, zero, one, then we put a one here. Why? To make the total number of ones in this four bit message as even. So let's say if there was another message and this time the number was let's say one zero one so right now the number of ones are even right so the parity bit this is the parity bit it will have zero because we are keeping the number of ones as even and right now they are already even and once we do that on the receiving end what happens is when the receiver receives that message it it knows that we are using the even parity we we keep that while designing the system so it knows that the message that is received must be in even parity, right? The number of ones should be even. So it check, it checks these number of ones, it checks whether they are even or not. So if they are even, for example, here, the number of ones are even, right? So it will say that there is no error in this message. Again, for this number, it will check the number of ones are even. It will say that there is no error in this message. But let's say, let's say, uh, some error occurred and this bit changed as we were talking about it before and let's say that it changed and now it changed to uh, let's use a different color let's say it changed and now then uh, because of the error it is one here now you can see that the total number of ones are odd. So at the receiving end, when it will check, it will say there is some error in this message and this message is not right. And it will ask the sender to send this particular message again because it is it has some error. We know there is some error because total number of ones are odd. They're not even while we designed the system to be even. So this is how uh, basically parity works. And also there is one flaw in it as well we can um, handle or we can detect the uh, odd number of errors but what if the change or the error uh, occurs in such a way that the total number of ones are even for example if this bit changes as well if it changes there are a total four ones we know that the message is not right there is error but we won't be able to detect it because number of ones are even so uh, this method only detects half of the messages half of the errors sorry half of the errors uh, basically um, uh, what we, sh we should say is it can only detect odd number of uh, odd errors 
if the parity is odd it can detect that but if the parity is even it can't detect that uh, and for that uh, we, we at least have you know half the problem solved so for the other half we use other methods in combination with this one right okay so this is basically what parity was now let's see how to uh, design the two circuits for parity generation okay by parity generation i mean this bit this part to generate this particular bit and by parity checker i mean this part at the receiving end this part right this will be the check okay let's quickly see how to do that okay before moving towards the designing of these two circuits let's quickly look at the exclusive or or xor gate and why are we doing that because this function will actually this gate will actually help us design these two circuits okay so remember the xor function what it does is when the input is equal to uh, is, the input is same the result is zero right you can see that here as well but when the input is different the answer or the function is one so that that's what it does uh, we can also write the min terms from this truth table and you know how to write them if you don't i have done another video and you can look at that here right now i'm, I'm going to quickly write the min terms from this so for min term you look at the ones and then you just write for example for this this term here if it is zero you write prime so x prime and then y because y is one and then here in in the next term x because x is one and y prime and then the summation of these two like this here or this this here so this is the these are the min terms which are written from the uh, from this truth table all right uh, what we need is we need the three input xor gate and it is something like this this is the truth table okay now you can see something different here and that is here the input is same and the answer is zero that's fine but you can see here the input is same but the answer is not zero it's one so basically the three input xor what we do is we take the inputs one by one so first of all you will evaluate it for the two for these two x and y so since x and y are same the answer will be zero now this zero and this one will be checked so zero and one uh, this zero and this one they, they are different therefore the answer is one basically you design it you you evaluate it like this uh, the first two inputs together and then the result of the first in first two inputs the result the output of these two with the input of, of the third one right the third input right and then the output. that's how you evaluate it okay here you can notice one thing you can see that you can see a pattern basically and you can see that wherever the count of one the number of ones is odd this function returns one so you can see that in this row the number of ones is odd it, it is one right so it gives one here again the number of one is one which is odd so one here the number of ones is even so it, is, it has given zero again number of one is odd and the answer is one number of one is even you can see two ones here and the answer is zero two ones answer is zero here you can see the number of ones is odd three number of ones three ones and you can see the output is one so basically this xor function returns one whenever the input has odd number of ones so we call it an odd function right you have to remember that similarly if i take f dash here so f dash uh, will basically just everything will just be inverted right so if, since it's zero it will be one one will be zero again one zero one zero one one and zero so that's gonna happen so you can see the f dash will return one whenever the number of ones is even and when the number of ones is odd it will be zero right basically it's exact opposite of this function right so f dash is called an even function okay now that we have established that let's move on and, and quickly design our circuits as well uh, these okay again you can write the min terms from this table you can pick these ones there are four number of ones here these four ones and you can write the min terms like this right i'm going to move on and, and basically these are one two four and seven if you start counting from here zero one two four and seven so 
these are the the numbers of the, these 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 rows basically all right okay not that we have established that xor is basically an odd function and f dash is basically an even function we can design our circuit remember uh, by the way, if you want to write these min terms as k map, I've written these here as an example, just as an example, so you can see. Uh, this is this k map is for this min, these min terms, and this k map is for f dash. If you don't understand k map, and if you if you are not looking for the k map or the min terms, it's fine. You can quick you can um, you can easily skip this slide. And it has nothing nothing to do with the parity function. It has nothing to do with the parity generator or checker. This is just for extra information. So just skip this slide if you're not looking for this. Okay. Uh, just remember, what you have to remember is XOR is an odd function, XNOR is an even function. Right? Just remember that. This is the circuit diagram of XOR function. This is the circuit diagram of F dash, which is XNOR. And you can see three input odd function and three input e1 function. Okay, now that we know that, th these are basically, this is just the XOR gate, three input XOR gate. And this is just the XOR. So for XNOR, we have written a NOT gate at the end. We have added a NOT gate at the end of our circuit. That's it. Now that we know that, let's come towards the parity. And we have, uh, we just discussed what was parity. We discussed, I'll quickly explain again. We just discussed that we have a three bit message and we generate a parity bit, which is the fourth bit. And if the number for, for even parity, if the number of ones is even, this parity will be zero. If the number of ones is odd, for example, here, this parity bit will be one. And that's how we keep in check that the overall parity of this four bit message is even when we send it. That's it. And at the receiving end, obviously, we check if the number of ones received are even or not. That's how we check for errors okay so um, this this thing here generating this parity bit this is if you are making a circuit for this this is known as parity generator parity generator and when we are checking the parity at the receiving end when we check whether this four bit message which is received has even number of ones or not that is known as parity checker and it is done it is made on the uh, receiving end Par parity generator works on the sending end and parity uh, checker works on the receiving ends right okay um, so here you can see that basically this is just an xor function nothing else this is just an xor function so we can make a parity generator by just uh, writing or making the circuit of an XOR function, three input XOR gate, that's it, right? So it basically generates the parity bit because if the number of ones is odd, it will put one here. If the number of ones is even, it will put zero here. And that's what we want for an even, for an even uh, parity. This is an even parity generator. What about odd parity generator? You can simply use the XNOR here. If you want to make this an odd parity generator, you can simply use the XNOR, the opposite of it. That's it. This is our parity generator. This is the circuit. Okay, uh, let's quickly see the parity checker as well. So for the checker, you can see, you can look at this table. For the checking part, we have the three bit message and we have the fourth bit for parity. For evaluating our message, we will obviously look at this these three bits, right? We will only decode these values. We won't decode the parity value. But for checking whether uh, the the bits, the message that re that is received has any error in it or not, we have to check. We have to take these four inputs, right? And when and what we will do is, for even parity, obviously, we will see whether the number of ones received received are even or not. So here, the number of ones are even. There there is no one. This is considered as even. And let's take another example. Here, the number of ones are even, but here, the number of ones are odd, right? So if you look at it, again, it is simply an XOR function with four inputs. 
it is doing the same thing it is the odd function it is just looking if the number of ones are odd it, it's going to give you one and if the number of ones are even it's going to give you zero that is basically just an eggs or function uh, the only difference is it has four four inputs now that's the only difference so that's it that's our parity checker we will make an XOR function with four inputs you can see that here and how will we design one that's how we are going to take the four inputs x y z and p we're going to put two of these in one gate the other two in one gate and the output of both these gates will feed into the third gate so we will use three xor gates and that's how you design it that's it that's the parity checker it's going to give you one if uh, odd number of you have received an odd number of data error or in other words, if you have received odd number of ones, and it's going to give you zero if there is no error, or in other words, even number of ones, or in other words, even number of data bit error, right? That's it. I hope it was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions.